Hello and welcome to this latest Fellside service for this second Sunday of Lent. This uh, is actually my second attempt to uh, record this service. I'm actually feeling uh, quite frustrated now as I did go across to St Hilda's and fortunately I did play the recording back and as seemed to have, have happened on various occasions in St Hilda's. I don't know if it's something to do with the atmosphere, atmospherics in the building or, or whatever it is. But when I played the recording back, um, there's something wrong with it. Um, it makes it sound as though uh, I've got a speech impediment and that I'm lisping. And as I say, it has happened on various occasions in that building. So uh, rather frustratingly, uh, I've come to the Vicarage dining room to record this service. Um, I wasn't traveling to uh, one of the other churches to record it as I do need to uh, get my laptop in to, uh, for service and uh, an upgrade. So uh, I need to do it just in case there's a problem and, uh, and I don't get it back. So as I say, here I am for the second time of asking uh, in the Vicarage dining room for this service. You may see a candle uh, lit behind me. That's because over the last few weeks in all our services, we've been remembering those mourning the loss of loved one through uh, the coronavirus and, uh, and so on. So uh, at the beginning of our time together now, we'll, uh, we'll pray the prayer that we've been praying. Let's pray. God of all, we cry out to you for help. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect us, Lord, and be with us, especially those of us most vulnerable during this coronavirus crisis. Move us to reach out in love to our neighbours near and far, so that the humble may be exalted, the hungry filled with good things. Grant us the courage not to rush back to our old ways, but to rebuild our world together, creating foundations of justice with equality and peace for all. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so our service this morning is going to take the form of morning prayer. So let's just take a moment or two to still our hearts and minds as we come before the Lord. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. A prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light brings forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The canticle, A Song of, Pre a song of Penitence, um, from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness, According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again, give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Canticle, the Saviour of the World. Jesus, Saviour of the World, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you save your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, Loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. And so to our Bible reading set for today, this is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my word, in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was looking through the, book, the booklet that uh, the diocese have printed for Lent, Read, Mark, and learn and uh, that is looking through Mark's gospel during this season of Lent and I looked ahead to uh, the passage um, that uh, focuses on what I've just read to us from Mark chapter 8 and this is actually set in the booklet for Friday the 12th of March and it's written by a lay member of St. Thomas's Lancaster, Ruth Assall. And um, she writes uh, very well on that passage. And so I'm just going to take it as my guideline for the next few minutes and just kind of uh, explain what she writes in that passage uh, before going off uh, with, my, with my own thing, as it were. And uh, I just want to say that uh, these booklets are available. We have put them in the porches of our churches where it's possible to leave the porch doors open. So I think that's all of the churches apart from Barton. So hopefully some of you have uh, been along and are able to read uh, this booklet each day during Lent. But Ruth tells the story about uh, a theologian in America who a number of years ago published a book titled Almost Christian and it was based on a study that she did of teenagers in America 
and in her research she discovered that there was a clear pattern amongst these young people. Many of them would say that they were 100% committed as a Christian, but they had no problem in also being committed to aspects of other religions and even humanism, as well as having an image of God as some sort of therapist in the sky who was there to make the pathways of their lives smooth and easy. And on digging deeper, she discovered that this wasn't because the young people had misunderstood what they'd been taught, but because they had actually precisely understood. In trying to make disciples, or trying to make discipleship seem attractive and accessible, genuinely well-meaning people had ended up communicating a gospel that had lost the heart of Jesus' teaching on what it means to be a follower of him. And, you know, we are challenged when we turn to the Gospels because on various occasions, Jesus seems to make it very difficult for people to follow. And he talks of um, those who put their hand to the plough who can't turn back. He tells one person to sell all that he has and give it to the poor and then go and follow Jesus. And again, in this passage we're looking at this morning, he uh, doesn't make it very easy uh, to gain more followers. But Jesus was really clear that anyone who followed him needed to learn not only where Jesus himself was heading, which of course was namely to the cross, but they also needed to learn what it meant to walk in the way of the cross. So Jesus says, deny yourselves and take up your cross. And his message then and now is so counter-cultural. In the main, the message we hear around us is promote yourself, put yourself first, and entertain yourself. And so to take up our cross and to follow him, it's not easy. Of course, in many countries in our world, people do take up the cross day by day to follow Jesus. I'm thinking of those who live in countries where there is much persecution of Christians, perhaps those Muslim countries where it is really hard to, to be a Christian and people find hardships each day because of the profession of faith that they make in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you only need to uh, Google the Barnabas Fund and Open Doors and other such organisations who help the persecuted church uh, to come across some real shocking stories of persecution of those who name the name of Christ. But for ourselves who don't live in such places and don't face such things day by day, how do we take up our cross? How do we follow? How do we deny ourselves? And for me, I think that comes when we make that real conscious decision for ourselves that we will stay with Jesus no matter what. No matter what life throws at us, we make that decision to stay with him, to follow him, because he's promised not to make life easy, not to be some kind of Harry Potter in the sky waving a magic wand to make everything all right, but that when the going is tough, he will be there with us. And so I have in mind those kind of situations when someone comes in from work and there's a letter on the table from their wife or from their husband saying that they've left. When that phone call comes at six o'clock in the morning to say that dad's died. When that footballer or rugby player is injured and they get the news from the physio, this injury to your knee, that's it. It's cost you your career. You'll have to retire. And it's what we do in those moments. 
to take up our cross and to follow Jesus and to say, you've promised to be with me. I'm trusting you. I'm following you no matter what. And in the Gospels, we see Jesus asking the disciples when he'd said things that people had found out to take and they turned away from him. And he said to the disciples, will you go away also? And it was Peter who answered and said, Lord, who else can we turn to? You have the words of eternal life. And it's knowing Jesus and those promises he gave that he's the way, the truth, the life that he is the resurrection and the life. It is those promises that we cling to in the hard times as we take up our cross, as we follow him. You, it's you, said Peter, who have the words of eternal life. And once I was uh, in Southport, some of you may know that uh, my mum lives there and on a visit I was doing some shopping, I was on Lord Street, the main shopping street in Southport and uh, this is going back quite a few years ago but there in uh, the flowing orange robes and shaven heads was followers of Harry Krishna and uh, they stopped me to talk to me and uh, I didn't have a dog collar on, uh, they didn't know that I was a vicar and uh, they began to talk to me and uh, put various questions to me. And I turned it round and, and asked them questions. And I asked them about heaven and eternal life and having forgiveness of sins. And to be honest, they couldn't answer me. They had no answer at all. And uh, they began to talk and I said, well, no, that's not what I asked. Tell me about these things. How can you know about eternal life? How can you know about heaven? How can you know about forgiveness of sins? And about the fourth time that I turned the question back on them and they couldn't answer, they simply gave up and uh, they walked away to try to speak to someone else. And they had no answer to those questions. And you know, if we think of the world's religions, and we think of them as doors around a room, perhaps in a circle. There's only one of those doors that has a cross on it for the forgiveness of sins, for the resurrection of life. And that is why Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, the resurrection and the life. It is why there is forgiveness of sins in his name through all that he did on the cross and Jesus Christ as the as the scriptures tell us Christ crucified is a stumbling block because all those followers of Hare Krishna could tell me was you do this and you do that and you do this and you do the other they had no answer to the real questions of forgiveness of sins and the like and so that's why I say when it comes to the problems of life when the real deep things occur, it is that conscious decision that we will take up our cross, that we will continue to follow, that Jesus has promised to be with us. In him, there is eternal life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, when we come to that decision, that no matter what life throws at us, when the phone call comes, when a relationship breaks up, whatever it may be, it's that taking hold of the cross and saying, I am still with you, Lord. Be with me, help me, guide me. It is then that we take up our cross and we follow him. Amen. And let's just take a moment for reflection.
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. And so let us pray. Lord, we bring to you the church, your body here on earth, and each person within that body. And we remember those Christians whose faith causes them hardship, distress, or danger. May we allow their commitment and courage to inspire our walk with you. Lord of life, may we grow in your love. Lord, we bring to you the church in our own area, remembering not only our own local fellowship within the churches of the Felside team, but also those Christians of other traditions with whom we are called to serve you. May we work with one heart and mind for your kingdom. Lord of life, may we grow in your love. And Lord, we bring to you the world with its pain and its suffering, its hatred and its violence, its insecurity and despair. Remembering all victims of exploitation conflict or greed and may we keep in our minds the needs of so many and strive for the justice and peace of your kingdom lord in your mercy hear our prayer and we bring to you our friends and loved ones remembering those we know who are going through times of stress and unhappiness as a result of sickness grief anxiety or loneliness and in a moment or two of quiet let's just lift to the Lord those on our hearts and minds may, may we uphold them in our prayers and bring them your healing grace and guide all who minister to their needs. Lord of life, may we grow in your love. And so, Lord, we bring you ourselves, asking that we may increase in faith and love as we worship and serve you day by day. Lord of life, may we grow in your love, keep us faithful to our calling and committed to our service so that our lives bring glory to your name. Amen. And our collect prayer for this second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's faith, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen may god our redeemer 
show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So concludes our service for the second Sunday of Lent. I shall go and watch it back now and hopefully this second attempt has worked and I don't have to re-record it once again. So as always, until the next time, bye for now.